So, we've got all our parts out. Where do we start? Well, we have our flight controller that we want to mount in the center there, making sure that the arrow is going forward, are pointing to the front of our quad. So we've got that. We want to get that mounted on. And obviously, we want to solder up our motors to our flight controller. Now, some people like to solder the motors up with the flight controller like that, roughly working out where they need to be, um, solder the motors up, and then take the whole thing and then mount it on the frame. I'm not a great fan of doing that. I like to firstly mount my motors first. That's what we're going to do with this project here. Now, as we can see, we get some screws that come with our motors because these are GEP RC, nice quality motors. We've got different size screws for different applications. So we have small, we have some screws here for a three mil carbon frame. And we have some little screws here for a two mil carbon frame. And then we have some screws here which are used for our T-mount on our motor to attach our motor, uh, our prop to our motor. As you can see there, we've got two holes next to the center hole for putting our screws in, which are these screws here, and we've got a spare set. Because if you're changing props in the field, you're quite easy. You take the screws out, put them to one side, and they disappear in the grass, never to be seen of again. So the fact we've got two sets is good, which shows well these are good quality motors. But we come up against our first hurdle that we need to consider, and that is this frame is not 3mm or 2mm, it's 1.5mm thick. It's very thin, flexible, but we're only making a small lightweight quad, so it doesn't need to be too thick, and, and lightweight can be our friend in this situation. So we can't use these, motor, these screws here on our motor, because if we put them through, like so, and then we put, hopefully we'll be able to see this, you can see that if I put that there, let's get this lined up a bit better, like so. Can we see that our screws stick over the top? They're too long um, and they stick over the top of our motor base there, and they could come into contact with the windings if we're not careful. Now, it's unlikely, but to be honest, I want to be more safe than sorry in this situation, so we won't be using these screws in this instance. This is where our selection box of M2 screws comes in handy because we've got screws that are the next size down which fit nicely. So what we're going to do next is we're going to mount all four of our motors to the four corners of our frame with these tiny little screws. Um, we will keep these screws for another day. We know these will be useful for us in the future. So it's always good to have a good selection of M2, M3 screws. Um, so that you can use them just in case for any circumstance that may come up. So let's put the motors on now and we'll come back and see what it looks like afterwards. So we have our motors affixed, they're nice and happy and they're nice, nicely affixed to our frame. No little screws sticking above the sort of mounting bottom there. So we're very very happy with that. It's all looking very nice. So What's our next job? Well, obviously we want to get our flight controller mounted nicely in the middle. But we've got to have something you've got to think about now is to how we're going to fix our, um, our LiPo underneath. Now we've got a little bit of like, Uma grip that will go on the bottom. That will help attach it. But we want to have a battery strap. Now, a battery strap came with this frame, but it wasn't very good. So I've got a little battery strap here from um, a Maxino. Great little uh, company. I think they're German-based. Um, make good frames. In fact, they supply uh, we, we supply the original um, Speed Race X frame in Europe. Um, I think you can buy pre-built versions of that frame if you want to. So uh, nice little battery set. But we probably want to fix this now because once we've got our um, flight controller attached to the top, it's very difficult to sort of stick the stick it through and, and, and thread it through like that. So we want to do this next. And we can sort of lay it flat out of the way. And then we're going to mount our, um, our flight controller ESC all in one board. So how are we going to mount that? Well, this is a bit unusual flight controller because as you can see, you can see there, we've got our little connector um, for our USB to connect it up to Betaflight on the computer. But this one on this board is set a bit far forward. And we've got a little bit of pressure it's putting, it's touching against the frame there and it's not quite fixing. So we have to raise this up a little bit. 
which means the uh, frame is going to be a little bit tall on, on the front there, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Try and keep our um, centre of gravity as close to the props as we can. If we're a bit higher, that's not the end of the world. Um, it just obviously want to try and keep it as compressed as possible. We have to be a bit higher in this circumstance. So what we're going to do to mount it is we're going to mount um, some M2 screws up like that. We're going to attach them with bolts. Then we're going to put some gummies on here. And this doesn't come with gummies, but I've got some some um, beta FPV gummies. I've got a selection bag, which is really useful. So I'll fit them on there. We'll slide that on, and that gives us our fixing. We can do the same thing with a uh, uh, VTX on top when we come to that. We'll be fixing that actually we'll be fixing it this way around um, and that will just um, go over the top of the the screws and sit quite nicely there and then we can fix our uh, canopy through on top um, we've got the little standoff things that we're going to use to do that um, so it should in the end look something similar to this which is um, my guitar pick frame build i've got a bent prop <laughs> um, as we can see here we've got our flight controller we've got some standoffs and we've got our VTX sitting there as well, quite happy on there, um, like that. So we're going to end up with something similar to this. And as I said, the line is going to be a little bit high up. We want to try and keep our weight as centralised with the prop line as possible. But a little bit higher weight like that is not too bad. It shouldn't affect things too much, but we want to try and keep them as compressed as possible. So we can do something similar with this build here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread the battery strap, and then I'm going to mount the um, flight controller and then I'll show you what that um, looks like after we've done that. No point watching me put all that together. So we'll, we'll put it all together and through the magic of editing, we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. So here we are with the frame, with the flight controller all connected up. And the battery strap connects as well. Put that through. That's laid nice and flat so we can get it on the flat surface. But it would be a right pain to try and insert that through after we put all the frame together. Saves us a job in the future. Um, so there we are. So you can see what I've done here is I've put some long screws through. So I've put a screw with a bolt. I've had to use a spacer here, and then I put the, the gummy for the flight controller on top of that. Now I've used to use a spacer because the problem with the um, USB connection that I mentioned earlier on, well, that has actually um, been a bit worse than I thought. As you can see there, it's completely in line with the carbon because it's a weird design on this flight controller so far forward. So um, we've had to sort of raise it up so that that um, doesn't even come anywhere near to get in contact with the carbon. Um, obviously, if it did fit, you wouldn't want it sticking through too far anyway, because it would be sticking down, then rubbing against your battery, um, and so that could cause it to break off, which would be a real problem if that was to happen. So it wants to happen. So it needs to be out of the way anyway, but this is perhaps a little bit too far. So it's going to make uh, the, the top of the, the frame stick up a bit higher, but with this particular fly controller, which I chose to use because it is pretty much as far as I can see the cheapest uh, flight controller you can get um, for you know the whoop style with all in one it's the cheapest one you can get and it's quite reliable as well I've not had any problems with the other ones that I've used so obviously it's got its issues you don't pay too much then you have to have corners cut in certain places you can't get exactly what you want but if you want to spend a bit more money and this is what I'd probably recommend that you do is you can get the um, the latest Gemku boards of a do a 20 amp and a 30 amp and they seem to be getting very good reviews I've got the um, one of them in another build and it flies really nicely um, this is a particular advantage for two reasons number one it comes with the gummies already so if it's the first time you're doing a build then um, you get the parts with it and they've got little um, spaces on them so you can place them on here and there's still enough of a space because they're like off center so the gummies have a long sort of base to them so that they can uh, um, sort of raise the um, the flight controller off the bottom of the, of the quad so you don't get too close so that's good so that's one benefit you get parts that you don't get with these ones because this is obviously cheaper also as you can see it's got the um, USB connection on the side now these quads can be a little bit of a problem because if you can see there like so if I was positioning it there when you try to insert the USB connection it's right in line with the motor so it can be a bit awkward to sort of squeeze one in. So you perhaps want to get a USB connection with like quite a flexible end or maybe a right angle connection so that you can fit that in nicely. So it's a bit of an issue, but it's more useful to have it there than it is on the bottom. And obviously a lot more flight controllers, all in one flight controllers are doing this now. This also has bigger soldering pads for the motors as well. So those three points, but this is obviously 
um, I think it's about seven or eight pounds, depending on where you buy it from, more expensive. So we wouldn't try to keep this build cheap because it's perhaps your first build, so we've got the cheap flight controller, but I would say worth spending the extra money. <clears throat> so what else have we done? Well, we've worked out our heights with our screws. We use screws at different heights for different positions that will come um, a bit more obvious later on, but it's to do with our connection of the VTX. Now, if you notice on this VTX now I've got a different antenna on it because when I put it positioned, and this is the way I want to position it, facing forward, the other antenna didn't wasn't quite long enough to reach out the back. So I've had to use one, had it in stock. Um, obviously, it does come with a with a little linear linear whip antenna, and um, that you can use, which is quite small. So you'd have to try and get that perhaps another way, of position it in a different way. But I happen to have one of these, and you can buy them quite cheaply with the connector on the end. Though I've got a slightly longer one there. So we've positioned that, we've worked that all out now because this is the time to do that. But we've had to take it off because now we start with our soldering and if we have that on there it will be in our way. So what are we going to solder first? Well the first thing we want to solder, we can focus in there, is our motor wire. So we have M1 there, motor 1. We have three connections, M2, we have there, that's motor 2, motor 3 and motor 4 in the top front left hand corner there. The way I like to remember it is they always add up to five across the diagonal. So one and four opposite means five and two and three are opposite and that also works out as five. So that's a good way of remembering it. That's the way I like to remember it anyway. So we've got our motor wire here. Now these motors do come with plugs and if our flight controller has a plug we can just plug it in and we're fine. And this flight controller does come with plugs but you have to solder them on yourself. And to be honest I prefer the connection of a solder joint a much better connection but it's a bit awkward here so fortunately i can i can solder it um, good enough at soldering just about to be able to do that if you're a bit concerned maybe get one with a plug instead and just plug them in and sort of tuck the cable around and and then perhaps tape it down out of the way or what you can do is as you can see you've got the three pads and they actually go through so there's three pads on top and if you can see it there's three pads underneath as well so what you can do is you can solder the two wires on the two outside pads on the top and then underneath solder the wire in the middle. So there's no danger of you um, bridging the, uh, the solder pads. That's a bit easier perhaps if you want to try that. So we're going to solder these all up. As I said, we'll, um, I'll do that and then I'll show you what I've done afterwards. So we'll solder up all the motors and then that's the sort of most trickiest of the jobs done. Motors are connected and nicely soldered up. And then we'll move on to the other song. We'll cover that in the next video. So uh, get that soldered now and we'll be back in a minute. 